video from Spen Hardy here and in today is going to be reviewing the new Jeep Wrangler Rubicon X. This is the Wrangler with the 35s. Before we get in this video, I'm going to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry Miller Jeep Chrysler here in San Diego, Utah for giving me some time with this Wrangler. I'm going to include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged two liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 270 horsepower and then 295 pound feet of torque with fuel economy apparently being 20 around town and then 20 on the highway. Not sure I believe that last one. Now, before we go with the front end, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So just like all 24 Wranglers, you've got the antenna built into the windshield, and then just like all Rubicons, you've got the cool venting there on the hood, which just adds to the sporty look. And we have the Rubicon logo there on the side. This one has the LED light package, as you can see, and then look at the metallic gray here throughout the grill. I think that's pretty cool looking. We obviously have the upgraded bumper. You've got red recovery points, and we've got fog lights built in as well. And putting it all together, I mean, this is what a Jeep should look like from the front end design. Now, coming around the side here, we've got 35s wrapped around 17 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear. You guys can see the wheels are beadlock capable. You got the silver there on the top, of course, you got the mini Jeep in the center as well. And then here's a quick look at the suspension setup. Still have a solid front axle. And then we got body painted fender flares with this one. And we got the little fender flare extension because of the 35s. And then you guys can see the Jeep logo trail rated badge as well. And then we have rock rail protection. And here is your full side view on the Rubicon X. I mean, with 35s, it just looks killer. Now here's a quick look at the key fob. We have our unlock function, our lock function, remote start. And then we got the Jeep logo there on the back. And speaking of back, this is actually pretty easy to open. You guys can see the little JL graph right there and then of course we can open up the window as well storage space here in the back is really good because this is a four-door wrangler this one has the alpine sound system and then body painted right here which is also really cool but yeah i mean it's a practical vehicle and when you're all done by the way just plop that down and then do 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 do, do boom you guys can see the led tail light action and then with the recovery point down below and then we got parking sensors on the bumper and this also can take a hit, that's for sure. And then you got the spare 35 in the back. And putting it all together, let me know what you guys think about the Rubicon X. But again, I think this is what a Wrangler should look like. 35s and lifted. Now popping inside, you guys can see soft touch here at the top. And then you got some nice red stitching here with the padding on the armrest. And then you got some storage space down below. And then here are the seats. Got more red stitching here. Napa leather seats is what it says. Legroom back here is really solid. Got a little storage net. Some vents here in the back. We also have some window controls. You got a full outlet here in the back as well. And the headroom back here, it's good. Now taking a look at the front door panel, you guys can see again with the soft touch here and the stitching and padding down below. All of our mirror adjustment controls. You can see the mirrors do have blind spot monitoring. And then of course, we've got 850 pounds of payload. And then here are the seats, Rubicon there. Again, you can see the leather trim. Seat is power adjustable. And we got our light control right here. And then you guys can see the steering wheel is manually adjustable. Taking a look at the steering wheel, really nice trim all around. Red stitching on the center portion. We got radio controls in the back, cruise control, adaptive cruise control. We got controls for the center stack as well. And then your regular stocks there on the back. And then here is the gauge cluster. It's the normal Jeep gauge cluster, mostly analog. We do have a screen there in the center though that we can use to scroll through. Some different menus, see different bits of info on the vehicle itself. Pretty cool setup. And then in reverse, you guys can see we've got a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. We also have the front camera as well, also has the trajectory lines and you can clean the uh, glass, which is interesting. Now this has the new infotainment system. Um, so response time with the screen is pretty good. Takes a second for some of the pages to load up. Got dual zone climate, heated seats, heated steering wheel. Love the Jeep icon right there. But yeah, overall, easy enough to use. You can see the new kind of dash design here. And then look at this on the Rubicon. I actually really like that with the red stitching that goes across. I don't know what this material is, but it has kind of a nice durable feel. Grab handle down below. And then you guys can see we've got analog controls for the radio, climate controls, dual zone climate, off-road cruise control with the stability control. A little 12 volt action here, window controls in the center, and then got a little media station four auxiliary buttons and then you guys can see here with the off-road stuff we got front and rear locking differentials sway bar disconnect and our off-road plus 
We also happen to have a two-speed transfer case, so you've got two-wheel high, four-wheel auto, four-wheel high part-time, neutral, and then four-wheel low. And then we've got our shifter for the eight-speed automatic. Cup holder action here with the key holder in the center. Got a little parking brake right there. Got the normal Jeep center console. Nice trim here on the top with the stitching that goes across. And then, speaking of storage, there's your glove box. And on top we got these here for the hard top. Um, you do have insulation with this particular one. Uh, with the back, as always, you gotta use tools to open it up. So here's our motor sticker for this Rubicon X, 49,395. Now the X package is $12,500. Now you don't just get 35s, you get the leather seats that are power adjustable, as you can see. You also get an upgrade with the infotainment system. You also get the 35s, and you guys can see the four to one rock track heavy duty full-time four-wheel drive system as well. You guys can see you got the hard top headliner. Like basically you get a fully loaded Rubicon with the 35s. So they don't want you to just have 35s. They want you to have everything with this package. After all options, this sticker's for 67,150. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors, do a blind spot monitoring throughout the rest of the rear. And Wrangler X away. Let's see if this drives like an extra $12,000. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, give my, I'll give my take on this uh, package at the end of the video. But first off, I will say the Napa leather seats are comfortable. But I will say as someone who owns a 22 Rubicon 392, I honestly prefer my leather seats to these Napa leather seats. Now these have like a softer texture, which some of you might like. The seats that I have have more of like a cowhide texture, which I like because it feels more rugged. So that's just kind of my take. But also I'm talking about how my Jeep feels more rugged and it's bright pink. So yeah, that, anyways, <laughs> driving along here, you know, this is supposed to drive better compared to before. What I will say is this, the extra sound deadening does help out. It does feel like a more insulated vehicle compared to before and that's by the way why we have the windshield antenna is by getting rid of a traditional antenna the windshield antenna is supposed to help out with sound insulation it's supposed to make so there's less noise coming from that corner now i will say that upgrade crawl ratio does work i just drove a sahara before this which obviously doesn't have 35s and doesn't have the upgrade crawl ratio and this with the same engine feels punchier uh, and yeah, so far this 2.0 turbo is able to move these 35s quite well. Now 35s are noisier. You do get more road noise from those. But I will say this top insulation does help out when it comes to noise. Yeah, let me just pull out in a big old Chevy Tahoe and just sit crooked in the middle of the road. Utah people, let me tell you. Um, but also, it the 35s do feel more comfortable in the Wrangler, right? 35s kind of act as like a secondary shock absorber is a good way to look at them. So there is that. Transmission's snappy. So it gets this up and moves. It does still kind of have a floaty feel. A little bit of on center vagueness. So yeah, it does the, the body just kind of floats a little bit. So you still get that. Still feels like a Jeep at the end of the day. I will say these seats are comfortable. I just like, I don't know, for some reason, I, I like this rougher, rougher texture. I don't know why that is, but that's just kind of at ease, what it is. Um, so we'll get our acceleration here and then we'll get into my opinion on this $12,500 package and whether or not it's worth it. Woo! <laughs> that's quick. It, it does, here's the deal is, so a Wrangler with 35s, and this, you know, the upgraded axle ratio feels about as quick as a Wrangler with uh, the Sahara that I drove had, was it 255, 55, 7 or 18? So what are those, like 30s technically? So basically this feels as quick as a Wrangler with much smaller tires, same engine. So that gives you an idea of upgrading the axle ratio, how much that does to obviously probably make fuel economy a lot worse, but acceleration a lot better. So here's my here's my personal opinion. I do think this this X package, this X package here, I think it's a good value with everything that it contains within it. Twelve thousand five hundred dollars sounds like a lot of money. 
but getting all of the options you get in it like you add those up and the pricing is it it, it, it works out right because i mean just the extreme recon itself is like a four thousand dollar package so yeah you guys can disagree or agree with me on that now forcing people to take all those options with the 35s i think this is where jeep might potentially lose out on some car deals because ford offers the the Sasquatch package on a base model Bronco. Like that would be the equivalent of getting a, a Wrangler Sport with this X package. So, you know, yeah. I mean, I understand why they're doing this because obviously, you know, most people that are going to get the Wrangler 35s are probably gonna add all the other options anyways. So it's like, hey, let's just make it so it's one big standard package. I understand. But I do think giving people choice with that, it, with an off-roader at least, it makes sense because some people just want to buy this for the utility of it. And so some people don't wanna spend the $8,000 in options that this has included into the Extreme Recon package, if that makes sense. You know, some people would rather have a, you know, MSRP price of, you know, 49,000 plus fourth, so like 53,000 in base model interior. They don't necessarily want all of this stuff that this um, has. So that's kind of my take on it. I, I, you know, it's a good deal for what it contains, but not everyone wants what it contains. Let me know your thoughts.